This is the science behind the bizarre to absolutely scary power that Plastic Man has. Adding Plastic Man onto the list of the popular characters that I've thrown my science background into to overanalyze yet again. Long before Plastic Man impersonated Batman, Wonder Woman, or even My Little Pony, or very easily a fully functional planet-wide nuclear warhead, Plastic Man's powers are derived from an accident where some years ago, a rather skilled and and professional thief named Eel O'Brien robbed yet another comic book chemical plant called Coal Chemical. But police soon arrived on the scene and a fleeing eel was shot and quickly exposed to an unknown acid. That entered his bloodstream and caused a body-wide mutagenic process. Managing to make it outside, Eel collapsed unconscious, only awakening to find that his flesh had become elastic. And having no control over it, he went on morphing into all sorts of strange strange and frightening forms scaring everyone he came into contact with. Eel eventually went to a bridge to end the nightmare, but was talked out of it, not that it would have worked. Instead deciding to use his powers that easily make him so powerful that God help literally whoever crosses his path to fight crime. Although he's content with being the Justice League's comic relief, Plastic Man has complete control over every atom in his body, or what is called a completely malleable physiology. Where Eel's body now exists in a perpetually fluid-like state, where normally his volume stays the same, but now he can move around his molecules to literally reshape every atom in his body to become anything. Plastic Man decided to wear a pair of dark glasses, or rather he made them out of his own body, as well as his red and yellow costume, that typically remain the same whenever he takes a shape. So there would be a red and yellow chandelier hanging over a table of plotting gangsters, or a a red and yellow abstract painting hanging precariously on the wall. But the villains never catch on until it's too late. Hilariously, Plastic Man can do something key to his powers known as density control, where he can increase or decrease the amount of molecules in his body, or rather he can change his mass at will, allowing him to become as dense as the heaviest metal in the world being osmium that's 1,402 pounds per cubic foot, which would cause him at his base base mass to weigh roughly 250,000 pounds instantly, or become as light and flexible as aerogel, weighing only a couple milligrams. Plastic Man can even pack on as much muscle as he deems necessary to become a Hulk. He can stretch his body to superhuman lengths and sizes with no known limit on how far he can stretch, thanks to him just adding on more and more mass the farther he needs to go. And thanks to this, he can also alter his size, becoming one one inch tall, can literally pose as one of Batman's utility belt pockets, or can become a titan the size of skyscrapers. Bizarrely, this would mean that in order to grow his mass at a moment's notice, Plastic Man would have to have the ability to take on anything around him, like the carbon in the air or surrounding water, and alter it to make more of his cells. A feat that he can't do when he's low on mass. But perhaps the most strange thing about his powers is that Plastic Man exists in what I can only describe as a mass of hive-controlled single cells, so possibly add on self-telepathy to his list of powers, in that each of his cells still seem to be eukaryotes, each likely possessing their own nucleus, and may possibly require more energy or food to live on, but his consciousness seems to live inside each and every one of them, and as long as just one of Plastic Man's cells survive, he can live on and regrow himself back to normal. This means that he can open holes in his body and turn himself into any object at all, even ones with working gears and mobile parts, like a trash can with a flipping lid, a rug, pizza boxes, a working cannon, a dragon, a moat of water, friggin' Optimus Prime, and Iron Man, or yes, his rocket boots do work, a rocket that can shoot at the 44,300 newtons required to send a human into outer space, or otherwise fly at 1,230 miles per per hour on a whim can turn into a giant bouncy ball, a mirror that can literally reflect all of the furniture and people in the room, and a fully working car like the Batmobile. That yes can drive around at speeds of 200 miles an hour and shoot baddies with a grappling hook made out of himself. So not too surprisingly, Plastic Man is completely immune to bullets and any form of blunt force trauma. His brain and body might be organic, but since his mind 
now seems to function within each of his cells that may or may not contain some new cellular structure to house his mind, his mind is said by Batman to no longer be organic, at least not like everyone else's, making him untouchable to all forms of telepathy, and above that, he doesn't seem to age, or rather his cells are able to perfectly replicate their parts, making him supposedly immortal, and growing up as the weird kid with the speech problems, that realized if I dove into understanding how things worked, then I could solve any and all of my problems, Plastic Man has some pretty impressive and strange ways to solve his and the world's problems, as long as no one manages to hit him with his one major weakness of extreme temperatures, or possibly acid like acetone, particularly though extreme cold, which would quickly render his powers useless, but I mean extreme cold as something akin to if not over negative 120 degrees Celsius, and these changes in temperature have to be as extreme as they are sudden to work at all, which often serves to just slow Plastic Man down and make Superman, whose ice breath can get up to negative 195 degrees Celsius and heat vision that goes up to nearly 28 million degrees Celsius, one of the only people on Earth that can stop him, as Plastic Man's feats and abilities are just insane. As during the Injustice story, after realizing that Superman had his son imprisoned in the super prison known as the Trench, Plastic Man strutted into the Hall of Justice, scaring most of the Justice League only to tell Superman to release his son, and refusing to do so, Plastic Man was escorted out by the Flash, only for Plastic Man to quickly knock out the Flash and perfectly copying his voice, mannerisms, and all, as he went about finding the Trench's location and stole a bunch of Green Lantern rings. Plastic Man then turned into a ball and dove all the way down to the prison at the literal bottom of the Mariana Trench that's otherwise seven miles deep, easily withstanding the 1,086 bars of pressure or otherwise eight tons per square inch. That would be like having 100 adult elephants stand on you in literally every direction at once as you also freeze in the one to four degree temperature. However, making it down to the trench, Plastic Man then oozed himself between a watertight seal to break into the prison, meaning that he would have to compress his body to be smaller than the water molecules around him, or otherwise smaller than 2.75 angstroms, which is this many meters small. After forging his hand into a key and flipping off Cyborg, Plastic Man quickly opened the cell door to rescue his son, and caused a prison riot, freeing all the prisoners using Mirror Master's belt, but not before he had to hold all of the pressure of the Mariana Trench bursting through the broken glass of the prison ceiling. Plastic Man has also attempted to play a losing game of prop hunt against Batman from time to time, wrapped himself around Batgirl as she jumped out of a plane with Plastic Man hitting an easily surviving supersonic speeds of 768 miles per hour, which if he turned into a plane or Iron Man, he could easily hit on his own. He's also able to make himself small enough to extract a microscopic machine out of Wonder Woman's head, as he has also gone about turning himself into a lamp and statue to spy on her. Plastic Man has, to his minor annoyance, been shot through the head, can quickly kill most villains that stand in his way, ripping their hearts out through their mouths or destroying them from the inside out in seconds, is immune to some magic like when Cersei tried to change him into different animals and he kept changing back immediately, has had a black lantern rip out his heart, which did nothing, and in a far greater feat, Plastic Man survived the blast of a thermonuclear warhead, which if he's anywhere near the center of the blast, Plastic Man would be surviving temperatures exceeding 100 million degrees, and a blast strength about 1,000 times more powerful than the bombs that dropped on Japan. That would vaporize most anything caught within their center. But what I found to be Plastic Man's greatest feat is the time that after he went back in time 3,000 years with the Justice League to ancient Atlantis, Plastic Man was frozen and then shattered into thousands of pieces which were lost into the ocean. And there Plastic Man lay for 3,000 years until he was rescued by his teammates that after having gone back, collected enough of him for him to be pieced and grown back together. And after this, Plastic Man then put down his hero identity for good, instead choosing to be a father to his son, only for Martian Manhunter, free from his fear of fire, to be turned into an unstoppable monster, defeating the entire Justice League, only for Batman to then 
convince Plastic Man to come back and save everyone. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Despite being frozen and shattered, Plastic Man has been shown to be immortal, with Batman's wits and strength being the only thing that can stop Plastic Man, with one of his contingency plans being for Superman to freeze Plastic Man long enough for them to throw him into the Phantom Zone and pray. With us going over the science behind Batman's intelligence and strength feats in these other videos. See you in the next one.